Good afternoon, all of you who are watching on your television screens in your comfortable residences. We are here today from the Mix and Mingle group. Ordinarily, Mix and Mingle would have had a huge crowd here and we would have hors d'oeuvres, wonderful hors d'oeuvres <laughs> from dining services. This doesn't look like that at all, but COVID changes everything, doesn't it? But we're here today for you to meet new people and Lynn is going to introduce one, two, three, four, five people to you who you may have met them, but now you can really get to know them and we hope you get to see them further as the days go by and make new friends. Thanks. Lynn? Thank you, thank you, Joel. I A forgot, wonderful. did I say my name or not this I time? just called you by name, so okay, you're good. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting to say that. Nope, you did a wonderful job. Um, okay, enjoy. Thank you. I am Lynn McCoskey, and I chair Mix and Mingle, and Joanne is correct. We've always had a wonderful party, but we're, we're glad that you're willing to do this today because a lot of us in the building don't know who you are. And we want to make friends, and we want to welcome you to Freedom Village. So I have Bob and Jan Mahaney sitting next to me. I'm going to start with Jan. We'll get a little bit from Jan to find out where she lived, where she came from, and what she did in her work life. Well, the <clears throat> lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan for the most part where I grew up and went to Michigan State University. We gotta do go is, green. Yep. And that is where we met. Oh, okay. And life has been wonderful since then. And um, <clears throat> Bob had applied for medical school and we were married at that point, so we then moved to Washington, D.C., where he attended medical school. Mm -hmm. And I worked for the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology, which was very interesting. At the time that I started there, they were sending mice into outer space. Is that right? And bringing them back and then examining their brains to see how much they changed. And wow. of course we had to um, prepare the, the brains and slice them for the microscope. And it was very, very interesting. <clears throat> we also did human brains. A lot of the people would not touch those. But oh. I didn't know the person and it was for science. So I sliced up human brains. Well, good for you. They can't <laughs> test if they don't have no. the specimen. <clears throat> so. Of course, they had to be <clears throat> prepared for the microscope, and we used different types of stains for different things that they were looking for in the cells. Mm -hmm. So it was very, very interesting work. It's, it sounds interesting. What about family? Do you have a family? Yes, we have four boys. <laughs> and interesting to raise boys, to say the least. And. Uh, you're not going to share any stories with us, are you, Jane? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I have here that you guys have traveled a lot. Yes, we have. And went to Europe, uh, went to China. That was a very interesting trip. And they were uh, building the dam on the Yangtze River. Mm. It was very interesting to see that. Okay. And so many other experiences and the Chinese people were very very nice and we enjoyed it. I've understood they're very gracious the Chinese oh, yeah they were mm -hmm. it would it would be wonderful to have made friends that we could have kept mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. a long period of time. Why did you choose how did you choose Freedom Village to move here? <laughs> we were familiar with it and knew that we would need a change as we got older. Yes, that's happened to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and so we applied and here we are. Well, good for you. And I must say, I really do like Freedom Village. I, there are so many nice things about it. And, and the people here are just so gracious. And because neither one of us is driving anymore, we are able to have rides to wherever we need to go. It's a great service, yeah. Oh, we appreciate that mm -hmm. so much. And 
So I just have good things. Also, Terry and the meals, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Tucker will be happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think he does a great job. He does a wonderful job. Yeah. yeah and in a way, I appreciate not needing to cook anymore. Exactly. <laughs> Don't all of us appreciate <laughs> not having to plan and, and cook? Yeah. You know, it just arrives. Right. And, uh, what about hobbies? Do you, there is anything you really enjoy doing? Oh, I've knitted Christmas socks for years. All your grandbabies have stockings? Oh, those and I think a few others <laughs> besides. <laughs> and, of course, each one has the name of the child the year that they were born, and then, of course, Christmas trees and patterns. On Wonderful. Them. So it's a nice keepsake, yeah. Oh, it is. And I don't think I'll make any more because it <coughs> requires good vision. Yeah, I heard others that quilt and, you know, do close mm -hmm. work like that say that it's becoming more of a challenge. And I could do some of it, but it would be more difficult. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm glad that I've done the ones that I have. Oh, and sure. I've taken pictures of each have one. It, have so it. Good. I have those. Good. Thank you, Jan. Nice to meet you. And appreciate your questions. Not an issue for me. I love talking with people and finding out about them. How about we move on to Mr. Mahaney. Bob, tell me about yourself, Bob. I was born in Owasso, which is over between Flint and Lansing. And unfortunately, my father died about a month before I was born. Oh. So my mother, who was a registered nurse, had the job of raising myself and my two older brothers. And she never remarried, but said her one job was to raise three sons. Take the boys, yeah. And so we went on. And then after graduating high school, I started at Michigan State, decided I was not ready for college. So I went in the Army and served a year in Japan with the Army of Occupation in 1946. And thoroughly enjoyed that time in Japan. Uh, no one was shooting at me, so it was strictly touring and doing my job. After I returned, I then went back to Michigan State and uh, met my nice wife, and we married. And at that time was uh, called up for the Korean War and not knowing I was in the reserves even, and was told I was going to be a combat medic, mm. which has zero life expectancy in a combat medic. And so that they said if I got into ROTC advanced, I would be all excused, which I did. Oh, and okay. got my commission in anti-aircraft weaponry. But then uh, went on to medical school. My dad was a, a general practitioner, graduated from Michigan, my older brother was a pediatrician, graduated from George Washington. My next brother was an orthopedic surgeon, graduated from George Washington. <laughs> so I went to George Washington <laughs> and, and graduated and then returned to uh, Blodgett, uh, Grand Rapids. In Grand Rapids. And yeah. took orthopedics. And uh, then we moved to Holland with our four sons uh, in 1961. And I was the ortho first orthopedic surgeon in the county. Oh and my gosh. So it was an experience learning and uh, being taught also about the ways and have thoroughly enjoyed it since then uh, doing uh, general orthopedics. I was the first one to do any joint replacements in Ottawa County uh, here and spent time with uh, Dr. Charnley in England uh, training on it. Then um, in, in my time here I have got to know a lot of people, but one of my favorite people was Larry Green, who was a trainer at Hope College in sports medicine and football and everything else. And he contacted me one Saturday morning and asked if I would mind being the team physician oh. for that afternoon. And I did and enjoyed it and soon learned I was the orthopedic surgeon for next weekend <laughs> and went on for. You had another job, didn't you? I had a job and uh, worked 18, 19 years with Hope. On that, so I became very familiar with the uh, sports medicine people in, in mm -hmm. at Hope College and the faculty, and they were always cooperative. And uh, I really enjoyed my contact with Hope. And so, that, uh, even though I'm uh, not a graduate of Hope, I was Jim Boltman said I'm an uh, adopted alumni. Mm -hmm. So, and I did that for 19 years. Yes, we have traveled a lot. We've enjoyed it. Uh, 
I learned about my Irish roots so that we would uh, eventually go back to Ireland every other year to see relatives. Okay. And, uh, and in thoroughly enjoyed uh, spending two weeks in Ireland, one week with family and one week touring Ireland. I was going to say, I'm a genealogist too. Well, so that uh, caught my. Well, uh, caught I am my a genealogist. And, uh, Both of us. Uh, uh, and I really wasn't interested when my mother said, You are going to do the genealogy. It was a tradition passed down from her father oh. that the youngest child do the genealogy because they were expected to live the longest. And so I was nominated and not happy at the time, but after a few discoveries, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it will draw you in. And it it's, never occurred to me to appoint one of my children to be the genealogist. Well, that would have been a good idea. I think I'm too late, though. Well, it, it really is. And I found that our youngest son is probably the one that's most interested mm -hmm. and will, will get a lot of it. But mm -hmm. material I've passed on, I've gone on some of the grandchildren and things like that. And I've written some books on it. Okay. On the family so that they all have copies. But uh, it has been a very enjoyable genealogy. And as Jan mentioned, the trips, she mentioned uh, Russia. Uh, she didn't say that she found a Petoskey stone in Russia. In yeah. Russia? And uh, it's yes. been certified as a Petoskey stone, and she found it on a little day trip off of the Yangtze River. Oh, my gosh. When I picked it up, you know what they all look like. Right. Well, it was the very same formation, and when you think of the world, why, would it, why wouldn't it be? Mm -hmm. They would have the same type of things there that we have here. I don't know. Can we let that get out? Uh, well, isn't a patax? Yeah. Isn't it our state well, stone? We've asked experts, and they said because uh, we thought maybe somebody from Michigan had dropped one or another pond or something like that. It was but, about you know this good space. size too. Yes. But I so. looked down, and there it was. Well, if you were by the water, they show up more when we were in yes. the water, and we were, were in, in water. the water at the time a little. Okay. Late a feeder stream into the Yangtze River. But, but, you know, it's formed by the water and, and well, the type of rock that it is. Right. Yeah. So really, why wouldn't you find one in some other part of the world? I suppose that makes sense, but it never would have occurred to me. Oh. Well, and Keep your eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you're traveling, <laughs> keep your eyes <laughs> on the stones. Right. Well, thank you both for sharing with us this afternoon. We're sorry it took us so long to get to know you, and but we're glad you're moved in. Bob and Jan Mahaney, thank you very much. Uh, we're very glad to be here. But I didn't tell you that we had, we had, I'm one of four boys, we had four boys, we had nine grandsons, uh, oh. we adopted a granddaughter, Okay. <laughs> and then we had three great-grandsons, oh, and uh -huh. then we finally got a great-granddaughter. Oh, <laughs> So It'll yeah, you have you have quite a large family. I see ten really grandchildren and four great grandchildren. Yeah, so it's a oh, that's kids wonderful. are so much fun, aren't they? Though I love all those boys. They help <laughs> us hold our youth when we start getting grandbabies too. Thank you guys. Okay, you like us to move now? Hello again. We're back with another introduction for one of our newer residents. Her name is Pat Sterling, and she came to us from where, Pat? just moved here from Ada, Grand Rapids area. Grand yeah. Rapids area, and yeah. did you live there? Or? Did live there for probably 12 years. So and where have you lived earlier? Be before then? that, okay, this is a long story. Uh, was born in Illinois, but then grew up in Texas, uh, in Dallas, Texas, and then moved back to Illinois, and all of our children were born in Wisconsin, moved to Michigan, back to Illinois, and then back to Michigan, and here we are. Here we are, <laughs> and here we are. What so, caused all this moving around? What were you um, doing? You know, the, the, most of it was when uh, during my childhood. I um, have often said I went to three grade schools, two junior highs, and three high schools. And it was just my family moving because they bought a house or they wanted to live in a different area or something because most of that was in Texas. How large of a family do you come from? Just one sister. One sister, mm -hmm. so two girls. Huh? Right. She's That's probably not hard to move with two little ones. Yeah, As true. five or six or eight little ones. <laughs> you might second thought about that one. Right. All right, tell me about your occupations. Well, my first... Uh, 
career was actually as a music teacher in public schools. Uh, and then that followed with uh, an independent music teacher and I taught cello and piano uh, for a number of years. And uh, that was during the time that I was also raising five children. So it was a busy time. Sounds like a busy time. Just right. five children calendar is yeah. a busy time. And then my husband also was uh, a Methodist minister. So I was a minister's wife, and anybody here who knows about being a minister's wife knows that that's pretty much a career, too. <laughs> well, I, I heard that. I am not a minister's wife, but there are several in the building. Mm. And, yes, you're expected to be able to play piano and mm -hmm. organize and kind of a right-hand man to the pastor. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a full life with five kids. What about um, any other education that you had? Anything else that you did yeah. in your life? Then, uh, well, I guess I need to put in the fact that my husband had a stroke when he was 45, and uh, so I had to make some changes in my life mm -hmm. as well. Uh, he actually lived to be 81, and so, you know, we, we went through all of those years with his getting somewhat better and then starting to decline. But... Um, he had uh, started a music business after he had been a vice president and, and uh, in sales and marketing and management for a couple of corporations, including Xerox, University Microfilm. So he had a really full career after he left the ministry also. Did he leave because of the stroke? Uh, no, he didn't leave because okay. of the stroke. So he that didn't he knock him change. out. No. Okay. Right. So he wanted to change. Mm -hmm. And what did you did you change anything in your life when he yes. made changes? When he made changes, then I needed to make some changes too, of course. Um, but uh, I started to go to school to get a master's degree in as a reading consultant. Um, and thought that that could be my next career, but it turned out that I was just compelled to go into ministry myself. Uh -huh. And so when he was able to be left alone some of the time, then uh, I went to, to seminary. And, uh, and got your master's in divinity. In, right, right. And so that was in, in Chicago at uh, McCormick Theological Seminary. Oh, that's in Chicago? That's in Chicago. Okay. So I you must have been living in Chicago then. Is that where no, your family? Commuting, commuting. You were commuting. From, from Michigan. From Michigan. Right. Wow. Working full time. Having a husband that needed care. Mm-hmm. And as I've said, I had three three children in college and two in orthodontics at that same time. So that was another busy time. Yeah, that <laughs> was a pretty full life. You sound yeah. very accomplished yeah. and were able to juggle all these different yeah. things that were going on. Um, and you chose Freedom Village because? Because primarily. You were ready to rest. <laughs> yes, right. Have your meals prepared. <laughs> yes, that's part, part of it. Also have two very good friends here living at Freedom Village, and I was able to come and visit them a number of times, and they invited me to the dining room to eat a few times, so I became acquainted. Now, you told me I could mention their names, yes. and I happen to know both of them, yes. Cecil and Bette Williams. I call her Bette. Yeah. It's B-E-T-T-E. Uh, she's never corrected me, so I've continued. Um, he is also an MSU Absolutely. person, so we converse. My husband graduated with his master's from MSU. Okay. So we talk about the games and always say, go green whenever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just part of what people expect of me. Yeah. So you're good friends with Bet and Cecil. Um, after such a full life, Freedom Village sounded and looked pretty good to you then. Yes, I was feeling a need to to have a little more support. I think that part of it was that uh, my husband died um, three years ago, and then we had the pandemic. And right. so yeah. I was learning to live alone in several different ways, and uh, so I enjoy having people around. Oh, <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. You never have to worry about having somebody to talk with, visit, ask a question. Mm. So, yeah, I think all of us, and I've been here, I'm in my ninth year. Ninth. Mm -hmm. And never have thought we shouldn't have come. Yeah. It's been great being right. here. Where are all your children then? You've Fortunately, my children are in Michigan. Uh, had one one son who who passed away, 
but the other four are all in Michigan, and I just consider that such a such a blessing. And I know so many people who have one child in California and one in New York. Oh yeah, and that kind Santa of Santa Fe. Yeah, right. Is that yeah. true? <laughs> no, no. Okay. But I have Michigan children as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I was particularly down one day, I said, "Oh, you know, they just where do they live?" Lansing, <laughs> <laughs> and she quickly said, "Mine are in Santa Fe, New Mexico." Yeah. Well, Lansing, I drove there yesterday, so yeah. it's an easy get yeah. to. Thank you very much. We're happy to have you at Freedom Village. Thank you, and I'm happy to be here. Yep, this is Pat Sterling. Yeah. Please greet her when you're out and about. If you can't find her, go to Bet and Cecil Williams' apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good to meet you, Pat. Yeah, thank you. Hi, we're back again with Mix and Mingle Introductions. Seating on my left is Elaine Tannis. And we're going to ask Elaine where she came from and how she came to freedom. Oh, my. I, didn't, <laughs> I came from about a mile away. <laughs> our, our home was on 12th Street, and uh, we lived there in that house in the historic district for 49 years. Oh, my gosh. So we had a lot of work to do and things to get rid of to move in. And that was last fall. One year ago tomorrow, um, we moved in. You moved in. Yep. And I know you recently lost your husband. So yes, in July. We very express unexpected. our sympathy. Thank you. Yes, yes. Very hard with a new move, et cetera. Unexpected. Unexpected. But that's life. It is life. It is life. What about during your working years and your family years? What did you do? Okay, well, I graduated from Central College in Pella, Iowa. It's sort of the equivalent of Hope College, but it, in Pella, it's a smaller town. Nice little Dutch community. <laughs> We've heard of Pella, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, then after that, after I graduated, I went to Japan for three years and taught English. This is from 1956 to 1959. Once I returned to the States, I taught in Iowa and then I started um, graduate school in addition in the summertime and um, eventually got, got my master's. And after teaching in Iowa, well, I in, in, during that time, I, ha, my, I got married, okay? So you met Elliot and got married? Well, I knew him from when we were little kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> His dad was the minister of my home church in Waupon, Wisconsin. Okay. But that's a whole nother story. So, yeah, we knew each other for a long time, but not, you know. The last semester of my college, we started dating, okay. and then I went to Japan. And he went to graduate school, and then he went to the Army, and then he went back to graduate school, and I came home and to Iowa, near Iowa City, and so um, we're both graduates of University of Iowa. Okay. And he, has a, he, got a, he had a Ph.D., and I just a master's. Um, after Iowa, we went to Nebraska, where he taught at the university for two years, and then to Hope College. He taught there for 35 years. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Okay. And he was a statistician, and um, yeah, he took care. I mean, with the math stuff now, I'm doing all this business stuff, you know. Uh, I don't like it. And I'm starting <laughs> to understand how Holland how you got to Freedom Village because yeah. you've lived in the area yes. for a long time and worked, right. both worked here. Yeah. And when we were in Holland, I spent most of those years uh, raising my kids, mm -hmm. raising our three kids. And um, I did substitute teach at Hope College three different times in three different areas and jack of all trade and master of none. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were you teaching? Oh, man, I taught a religious course. It was a Christian education course. And these were all for people who uh, were, the professor was ill. Okay, okay, so I did that. Actually, I did that a number of semesters. And then I taught, because um, I was very involved in Christian education in okay. my church. I taught um, English as a second language. And I also was talk teaching a reading, speed reading course. Uh, these are at all different times mm -hmm. throughout the years. So kind of like a sub, they could count yeah. on you to, if they well, needed you? or Back in those days, just because I had this master's in education, I was allowed to teach those. But in this day and age, I think you'd have to have the, the special, um, you know, area, expertise. 
as so the accreditation would be not would be more narrow than it used oh, to be. Oh, absolutely, okay. and that's all because of um, accreditation. Okay, I'm sure. Okay, I'm sure. What do you do for fun time? Well, I really like to garden. I am so grateful to have my little garden plot behind right, Freedom right. Village. Um, I signed up last um, winter, and, you know, would, would there be one available? And there was one available. And so when I go out to my garden plot to pull weeds, which I love to do, people think I'm crazy. but um, They probably want you to weed <laughs> theirs. I've been weeding along the fence <laughs> and in the aisles because my little plot is so so small and doesn't need much I meeting. don't think they'll mind <laughs> if you I just <laughs> really enjoy it I call it my therapy You're exactly exactly now I saw that you play the French horn when you were in high school have you continued that no I um I, it was high school and part of college and then I gave it up gave it up very but I'm very excited because my one of my granddaughters is just starting to play French horn Aww. oh really yeah I, I love it. You that's know, that's great. great. That's great. Yeah. Now, uh, it also mentioned that you play piano. Oh. And ukulele. Poorly. <laughs> oh, that was that was a long time. Long ago. time ago. But well, we have another um, resident that plays a ukulele. Dolores Greening plays a ukulele. So well, if you want to brush up, don't you get somebody one. in no, the building. No, no thanks. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> all right. Let's see what else. Oh, singing. Oh yeah. You've been a singer all your life. Yeah, I, um, music was very important to me when I was in high school. And in college, I was in, you know, played the French horn a little bit, but then I, I, mus uh, I was in the choir, mm -hmm. choirs. So that was, uh, it's always been important. I've, I've been in a church choir since I was in high school and still am in a church choir. We have a choir here in Freedom, too. I know. Um, Louise Peppel leads our choir. And it's a wonderful choir. We have probably 30 to 40 members in it. Who knows what's going to happen after COVID? There's been a few of us that haven't been in the choir, and it hasn't been activated for the last year and a half. So, but keep that in mind if you want to continue. Anything else you want to share with us? Um, well, I think one of the interesting stories that I love to tell. Well, two things. Um, well, the first one I will tell is when I was in Japan, I had I went to Tokyo. I lived in Yokohama. I went to Tokyo uh, with a friend, and we bought silk brocade. And I brought it back to Yokohama and showed my dressmaker a picture, and I had a wedding dress made. Uh -huh. oh, wow. I didn't know if I was going to marry. <laughs> I don't know who I was going to marry, but I bought a special suitcase, brought it home, and um, I ended up wearing it. Did you wear it when you <laughs> were course. married? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I'd love to tell that story. The other, the other thing that was uh, has been so great about my life is, um, I, um, we, my husband and I did about five bicycle trips in the Netherlands, and oh. then we did two of them with, with our children, our our families, a bike and barge trips, and and that was in 2010, and 2015. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we enjoyed going to the areas of the Netherlands <coughs> where uh, our ancestors came from. Hmm. And that was great. Hmm. Oh, and I also, I, I can't re believe that I did this, but from 1989 to 1995, I oversaw the Reformed Church of America's yeah, I was gonna mention work that. in Asia. So I was traveling to Asia alone. So you were an, an executive time. for the... Yeah. Yeah, and I can't believe I did it, <laughs> but it was it was a wonderful job. Well, it sounds wonderful. I, it would be it's interesting for a woman alone to travel like that, especially in Europe. It's uh, well back then, you know, it was okay. I I don't think I could do it. I mean, I wouldn't probably do it anymore in mm -hmm. this day and age. It's mm -hmm. a different world. Okay, well, we're glad you're here. Thank you. It's kind of like coming home for you, isn't it, to come <laughs> back to Holland? So if you see Elaine Tannis, and what floor do you live on, Elaine? Six. Six floor. East Make side. Sure. East side. End Make of the hall. You're going to have to walk a long way to get there. <laughs> they have to walk all that far 
the floor below you because yeah. that's where we live. <laughs> welcome to Freedom Village. Thank you. Thanks for sharing You're your welcome. life with us. Thank you. And we're back again. This time we're going to interview a new resident. Her name is Marsha Buck. We want to hear from Marsha where you were born, where you live, what you did in your work life. You can start anytime. <laughs> is that all in one sentence? <laughs> <laughs> uh, where I lived. Where were you born? Where, I was born where in were Grand you born Rapids, Rapids, actually. Really? Yeah. And we lived in Granville in Grand Rapids um, until I was in the third grade. Okay. And then my father went into the service, and we moved every two years. And we went to Kansas and to Staten Island, and we were in I don't know, the whole bunch of states. Mm -hmm. And we came back to Holland when I was a junior in high school. Oh. So I graduated from Holland High, and then I went to Hope College. And I graduated from Hope College. Okay. So being in Holland is like coming back for you, too, being it at is, home. Because yeah. the in between there, I was living in California. Oh. Well, almost from the time I graduated till 15 years ago, I was in California. All right. So Did you have a family? I do have a family, yes. Um, I, we have two sons. Okay. One is uh, Jason. He lives in, in Los Angeles. Not close. Not close. Um, and the other one is Jeff, and he owns his own business, and he's in Atlanta. Okay. Boy, all of our children seem to go on all, we never used to. Years ago, we all lived in the same neighborhood right. and grew up, but now they go every which way. Did you have a work life? Did you work at all through your life? I think I've worked all my life. All your life? <laughs> yes. Um, doing various things. I had a teacher teaching degree from Hope um, in both English and then history and psychology as teaching minors. Okay. And um, so I taught for a while, and then I got a master's degree at the University of Pennsylvania in American culture, which was just really fun. I just wanted to study more about one thing and see it from all the different perspectives, okay. Okay. from movies and from uh, literature, from music, as well as where they lived. <coughs> now, how did you so use that? It's just my own something you want desire to. Do. to to see it all come together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And did that happen it for did, you after yeah. taking the class? It was very interesting. Okay. What about where else you've worked? Um, I worked in California um, with my husband on the business that he owned. Which was and what? We did that for a long time. Well, <laughs> he he was a minister. I didn't tell you that, so it makes it all the more interesting. But he graduated from Princeton with a theology degree. And then he went back to Los Angeles with me to take over his father's business. Oh, all right. His father wanted to um, go on another honeymoon with his wife, and so he asked him to take it over, and we did. So it was time for his dad to retire, right. and he asked his son to step in. Exactly. Okay. okay. And we did that for um, 25 years, tw 23 years, and uh, and then both business we had we started a second one as well and then they both collapsed so oh so then um i was sort of on my own and i um came back to holland to be near my mother who's who was still alive and lived yes lived here in the okay her name was ethel sweats and that she name was, sounds familiar she was living with faith and my sister Faith, and uh, she had been with Faith for almost 10 years, so wow. I wanted to be another person in that group. Okay. And I actually had not ever known my mother as an adult, you know, I, it, it, just seeing each other at vacations and so on didn't make it that I really yeah. knew who she was. Well, when you leave right after high school <laughs> and go to college, a lot of us went off to other cities, and you never come back. That's right. You just never do. You're you're the second person I've talked to that said I never lived with my mother. Mm -hmm. Once leaving home, and of course in high school, we're not really there anyway. So yeah, I understand what you're saying. But it was wonderful. My mother um, was a musician, and she had taken organ at Hope, and graduated as the first person to have organ as a major. Oh my gosh. And um, 
so that was exciting to be back there and and uh, to, to have share that with yeah her. for sure yeah. now you're working all your life I've heard that you worked with Bob McDonald <laughs> I worked for you worked for <laughs> Bob McDonald yeah um, he he was speaking at a HASP meeting. Oh, yeah. You know, they do the Monday, the first Monday mm -hmm. thing. And I heard him describe his dream and his process of bringing clean water to countries that are least served. And he wanted to do something special mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And I listened to him, and he, at one point in his conversation, he says, we have the very simplest possibility of making clean water the very simple cheapest way but clean water and we can teach that to the people in these villages that don't have any work either and so some promising young entrepreneur can have a business and make clean water for his neighborhood and I just thought that was brilliant right and, and I wanted to be to a do. part of that yeah and uh, so I talked. I said to him, "I'd like to be a part of this." I was looking for a job at the time, mm -hmm. and he said, "Well, okay, let's meet." And we did, and and then um, he interviewed me again, and we decided that I could start working for him. And he said, "Why don't you start with writing a grant?" And I said, "I've never written a grant." He said, "That's okay. You'll learn." Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I did, and we won the grant. So. Oh, wonderful! Those <laughs> so of you who do helped. not know, Bob and uh, Ruth McDonald lived here as residents, and Ruth is still in the building. Bob right. passed away three, four years ago right, now. Right. right. Yeah. So he was uh, a wonderful man. Very and nice. It was wonderful to meet Ruth as well. She has just become a yeah. very dear friend. Those of us who knew Bob, he was a really great fellow. Very, very, very nice. Yeah. So we worked together for, uh, well, I just retired last August, so it's been about 15 years that I've been here and working for Bob. So you've been in Holland for the last 15 yeah. years, but your brother is here. My brother is here. His name is Paul Swetz, and he's married to Janice. And um, it's so exciting that he's here because he had not ever been around me either right. as an adult, and right. he had lived in Memphis for a long time. So it was very exciting to have him, and it is exciting to have him mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. I know you were, I ran into her sister. She's only been here about three weeks. <laughs> and her sister was helping her move in. And the car was out in front, and her sister said, I said, you know, what's what's going on? And she had a cart, and I'm curious, and I asked. And she said, well, I'm helping my sister, Marsha, move in. She's so excited to be here, she said. So I was curious about this Marsha <laughs> that I was going to meet and find out. Um, I met Marsha last week when I went up and asked her to join us, and she graciously accepted. So we're so glad you did. And if you didn't catch it, Paul and Janice Sweats live in this building. So you will see the Sweats name around the area as well. So And there's another one. My mother's was related to the Penninga family, uh -huh. or is related, I guess, was is. <laughs> right, so Frank um, and... Frank and Sue, Sue Penninga. Penninga. And Frank has passed, but he lived Sue here probably here. five years after Terry and I came in. We lived on the same floor together. Uh, so, yeah. So I feel right at home here. A lot of family has been here, and it feels good. Yeah. Marcia lives on the seventh floor so if you haven't introduced yourself, I just went up there and the door was wide open. <laughs> she said, come on in. So I did. Yeah. We're so glad That's to have great. you in the building, thank Marcia. You. Marcia thank Buck, you. thank you very much. What a wonderful interview. <laughs> it's just, thank I'm you. having a wonderful time listening to all of these interviews. And I'm so happy that you and your residents can hear all of these as well. And so I hope when you meet all of these people, let's see, you have met Marsha, Pat, Elaine, Bob, and Jan. And so when you see them again, say, oh, I know who you are and I know what you've done. Now, enjoy your cream puff. It's probably been delivered to your door already. And we'll go in and enjoy ours, too, because we didn't want to eat and interview at the same time. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you very Joel. much. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. Good job, Lynn, as usual. Thank you for Mix joining and us. signing off for, this, for the time being. We'll be back.